if you change your diet in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, that same modeling study uh, from UK Biobanks, a really huge data set, uh, up to seven years added to your life. Mm -hmm. So it's always worth doing it. (laughs) It's just different. Not much adds seven years to your life. Exactly. If you could put that in a pill, you'd be (laughs) retiring on a private island. We talked about that golden window, the first thousand days, yeah. and uh, still more things that you could do through adolescence, teen years, young yeah. adulthood. But maybe before 40 is is really the, the sweet spot where dietary things then predict you know, how you're going to age and right. whether you're going to be at risk of neurodegeneration. But is there hope for people yes. over 40? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loads of hope. So there's a really nice modeling study that was done that looked at how dietary change at 40 could add up to 10 or 11 years to your life. There was that study that came out, which made loads of, it was actually only an abstract, I think, but people were like, oh my Classic. God. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> I was like okay. but you know, it, like a, de- a really decent research group, but I was like, yeah, okay. But it, anyway, for age 46, your diet at age 46 was like the most powerful predictor of risk of dementia. Mm-hmm. So there's all these things that we know, if you change your diet in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, that same modeling study uh, from UK Biobanks, a really huge data yeah, set. Right up to seven years added to your life. Mm. So it's always worth doing it. It's just different. Not much adds seven years to your life. Exactly. If you could put that in a pill, you'd be (laughs) retiring on a private island. But you've also mentioned before, and I think it's important to note that, you know, increasing lifespan Mm -hmm. is not only what we're trying to do, but then also the quality of that life, right? Yeah. So the health span is really important. And I think what's really exciting about nutrition is that medicine has increased up lifespan for Mm -hmm. the most part like we don't die from cholera or you know we don't die from infection very often or less so we can treat cancers we can treat things so we live longer but our health span hasn't actually caught up with that Mm -hmm. so there's something called the health gap it's actually more pronounced in women than men and you know we're on average 20 years of our lives is actually spelt on poor health Mm -hmm. which doesn't sound great Mm -hmm. so and the most powerful tool we have for increasing health span is at food is our dietary pattern. So if you want to live to like 88 and live well, then what you eat is really important. And when you make that change, makes a massive impact on on that outcome. The the thing with, with like, so say you make a change at 68. On average, US adults by 68 already have at least one chronic condition. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it goes up quite a lot and like polypharmacy starts to creep in fairly quickly, like 60, like by by 75, I think most adults have some sort of polypharmacy going on, which is like this prescription of several drugs to treat several risk factors Mm -hmm. that then themselves have side side effects. effects. Mm -hmm. Um, so if in some cases, if you start later, it does move from primary prevention into secondary prevention, where like you have the thing, but at least we can reduce the impact Mm -hmm. of it Mm -hmm. on your health. But that's still super important. You could so again, my, one of my favorite studies is, is the New Age One study. So they took a bunch of adults in a care home setting who had quite a lot of quite a high frailty score. So frailty is frailty is like the opposite of resilience, is yeah. how I think of it. Yeah. And there's no age limit for frailty. You can be frail in your fifties, huh. but it's essentially like a measure of how well your body is going to deal with a challenge. Sure. And you don't want a high frailty score because it means that you're anything like a cold could put you in hospital for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, so they took these patients who already had fra- quite a high frailty score and then they gave them a d- Mediterranean dietary intervention mm-hmm. and they looked at their frailty score three months later. And what was cool about this study is that they looked at the sort of the mediating factor microbiome mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they reduced frailty score across the board. So like wow. from grip strength to cognitive function, mm. Uh, like it all improved with mm. just a dietary intervention. That's all they did. Mm. Um, so there's so much potential, even in older age, and even if we do have already have frailty, there's always time and there's always good reason to change your diet mm. yeah. and to like make that change, introduce these foods back on our plates that we've lost, and start treating our food as like a really central part of our day. So prioritize it again. You should take time to make yourself lunch. You should take time. Like 
if anyone is going to fire you for taking a lunch break, maybe you should change the job. <laughs> because what is that? Yeah, yeah. So there's there's lots of and reconnect with friends and loved ones over food. Share meals together. So it's about changing the way we perceive food. It's not just there. We don't just have to eat to keep going. Mm -hmm. That's definitely not the thing. Yeah. Like we we're not cars. <laughs> we food is so much more than that. It gives us the potential to feel really good today, like have more energy, get out of bed and feel good, have a clear mind. But it's also an investment which is going to accumulate over time and make sure that you get more healthy life years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, people often say, oh, you know, you can't you can't predict when you're going to die. hundred percent. I might get run over by a bus. Like <laughs> somebody, you know, you might develop a really rare form of cancer. Like it, there's all these other factors. But even though you can't, predict when you're going to die if you eat well you'll enjoy your life in the meantime mm -hmm. and you're going to give yourself better health in that time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, regardless and crucially if you do then get hit with a rare disease or really unfortunate something happens your resilience mm -hmm. to that is going to be much better yeah. than if you had poor dietary like poor nutritional status so going back you know i know people who have been struck with cancer in their 30s like a BRAC positive breast yeah. cancer yeah. or really rare lung disease for a mm -hmm. non-smoker all this stuff their ability to survive treatment and survive the cancer like it's not just my friends it's, we know this that it is impacted by the nutritional status so uh dr specter did a study uh, a trial called prim which looked at whether giving cancer patients who are about to have um, immunotherapy mm -hmm. for melanoma, gave them Mediterranean dietary intervention, yeah. before, do you have read the study, before treatment mm -hmm. or just uh, normal care, right? Mm -hmm. So no dietary intervention. The, it improved survival to the immunotherapy by 40%, wow. just changing their diet. Now, of course, immunotherapy is a very strong contender for dietary change because we've spoken about the role of the microbiome for the immune system to function yeah. yeah and but we know this stuff so yeah even from a from a mental health standpoint yeah. i've seen some evidence showing that a healthy gut microbiome mm -hmm. might lead to um resiliency so decreasing the risk for the development of post-traumatic stress disorder oh my gosh that's you amazing. know um so even from a mental health standpoint it you know, there seems to be some sort of connection or association there. That's amazing. Yeah. 